Ah, well, that's some good tea. Welcome everyone to Ready, Set, Charge. I am Solomon, and today we are talking about electric vehicle consumption. What is consumption, and why is it important? Well, it is important because it is the number that tells you how far your electric vehicle can go, and I'm sure that is one of the first questions somebody asks about any electric vehicle. Simply put, consumption is the measurement of how much energy does it take to drive a certain distance. This is usually measured in two conventional ways. The first way is measured in kilometers per kilowatt hour, which means how many kilometers can you drive off of one kilowatt hour of energy. The other way to measure it is usually a kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. And what that is trying to measure is if you drive 100 kilometers, how many kilowatt hours of energy do you use? In the first part of the video, I am going to talk about the more qualitative side of consumption, which is what factors affect your consumption. In the second part, I am going to talk about some calculations, so the math stuff. Now, the first factor which affects consumption is something you might not even have thought about. Well, it's, uh, it's the size of your vehicle. So, the Hyundai Kona Electric here is a small crossover, which means the weight is somewhat lighter and also the aerodynamics is quite good. Now, if you imagine this vehicle becoming bigger, heavier, or even boxier, um, there's more drag, so aerodynamic will become worse. If it's heavier, it'll take more energy to move. Something that's like a big SUV or a boxy van, of course, the consumption wouldn't be as good. And the second significant factor which affects consumption is something you probably have already heard about. Well, take a look around. It's winter and boy, is it cold. And of course, the second factor is temperature. The lower the temperature, the higher your consumption. And the reason for this is simply just physics. Um, colder air is denser, and higher density just means you have to drive through more stuff. And the increased air resistance will increase your consumption. The third significant factor which affects consumption is driving speed. For an electric vehicle, if you're driving at city speeds, maybe 40 to 50 kilometers per hour, then you will get very good consumption numbers. You will use very little energy to drive a certain distance. If you're driving at highway speeds of around 110 to 120 kilometers per hour, then your consumption will go up. So the three factors that I have discussed, the uh, vehicle size, the ambient temperature, and also the driving speed. These are very significant factors that will affect your consumption. And I'm going to talk about a few other factors that can also affect consumption, but they are less significant. One of these factors is elevation change. If you're driving uphill, it should be quite obvious that you go you're going to uh, use more energy. And if you're going downhill, of course, you use less energy. Wind direction is also something that will change your consumption. If you're driving into a headwind, of course, you're going to use more energy to overcome the wind. If you're driving with tailwind, well, you're lucky. That means the wind is actually pushing you along. Uh, depending on what the direction of the wind is, your consumption can increase or decrease. And you have to take into account road condition. If the road is slippery, either with rain or snow or ice, that is also going to increase your consumption compared to dry tarmac. For my personal driving habits, uh, I do not have to take all these factors into account on a day-to-day -day basis. Where it makes a difference is where you're driving in a place with very little charging infrastructure and you're relying on every last drop of juice you have in your battery to get there. This is where all those small factors can make a difference. 
I'll give you an example of when these small factors seem to make a big difference. Say you're almost at your destination, you got 10 kilometers left, and you have just enough battery to get there. So you look at your consumption number based on what you get for 10 kilometers of driving on flat ground. If on your journey, this last 10 kilometer happened to be uphill, well, you're probably not gonna get there. If these last 10 kilometers are going downhill, well, you get there with a little bit of battery to spare. So you see how all these small factors make a really big difference in the situation where you have just enough battery to get to where you want to go. And you may ask, well, how do I know what the consumption of my vehicle is like? Now, part of it is experience. If you already have an electric vehicle, uh, pay attention to what your consumption is like throughout different driving conditions, under different temperatures, different speeds, um, so that you know what to expect when you're doing a certain trip. And the internet is a great place for all these kind of information. On YouTube or on forums, most electric vehicles had their consumptions recorded by someone somewhere and you can watch some of these videos look at some of these forum posts and find out what your consumption is likely to be under different types of conditions now, at least for myself especially driving on long trips i like to leave about 20 percent battery as buffer so that if i encounter unexpected conditions that increases my consumption um, i don't risk running out before i get to my destination